Hey guys, welcome to another edition to the uh, Precision Laser Instrument YouTube series. Uh, very recently, Precision Laser became a uh, Geoslam dealer, and I've been working with the uh, Zeb Horizon now for the past several months. And uh, one of the things that took me a minute to sort of figure out how to do um, was the geo referencing of point clouds as well as work getting colorized point clouds out of the unit. Um, so part of it, if you're using the Zebcam, is actually adding the video uh, through the uh, add video command within the uh, GeoSlam uh, hub software. Um, but outside of that, the processing is very simple. Just drag and drop your unprocessed GeoSlam file into the hub software and then add the video to it. So at the end of it, if we go into the view of a particular data set, you can see here there's our, our point cloud. And if I tell it to turn on the RGB, the colorized uh, point cloud will show. Um, so that's all that there is to it, really. Now, on top of this one, on top of colorizing it, uh, we wanted it also to be georeferenced. So if you come up here in the upper left-hand corner of the hub software and we turn on our uh, notes, you can see that we have several reference points. So with the GeoSlam Zeb Horizon, there's an optional reference plate. Uh, with that reference plate, you can stop at each one of your uh, control points and do a count of five seconds, and it will log that position inside of the uh, inside the the uh, actual point cloud itself. So that whenever you bring it over into the draw software, it allows you to do a georeferencing. So that's what we're going to go over today. Um, not the field procedure of collecting this, but more or less the office procedure about using this to georeference. So to start working with the data in order to get everything georeferenced and colorized. Uh, what we are actually going to do is we're going to have to go to the directory that holds this information. So if we go under our config and we go to our advanced options, we can see here we have our data folder. So if I open that data folder and I come to that particular project, and we scroll down, we can actually see our results, Zeb zebcamworld.lez. So there's our LAZ file. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy this and I'm going to place it within my GeoSlam GeoReference folder. So there's my uh, Zebcam world. This is my control point information. And the last thing we're going to need out of our data set, if we come back to that exact same one, is we're going to actually going to have to export our reference points. So we did use the reference plate, so we're going to use the with reference plate base offset and we're going to choose our folder location so where I'm going to place this is going to be on the desktop once again using this GeoSlam GeoReference folder and I'm going to say export so now you can see here we have our uh, reference points we have our control points, and then we also have our Zebcam World LAZ file. So I actually made a shortcut on my uh, taskbar here for the draw software. And you can do that simply by opening up draw. Uh, once it sets itself up down here inside your taskbar, just right click on it and say pin to taskbar. That way you can use it anytime that you want. So we're just going to click down here and start up our draw software. So we're just going to go ahead and import our point clouds in here. So we're just going to go up here, File, we're going to say New, and we are going to open our scan data. So on my desktop, come to this GeoSlam, we'll choose this LAZ file, say OK. We'll set this thing to Drone moping, uh, Mobile Mapping Project. Expand this out, and we want to change this LAS min-max intensity and min-max color to 255. And now we'll choose where to save this thing to. Once again, I'm just going to save it to that GeoReference folder. Hit Save. And it's going to start importing the scan data.
All right, so Scanda has been import, imported uh, successfully, and we can see our different views here. So what we can actually do is right-click on this and go to Edit, and it'll say it's going to say the uh, it's going to be overwritten. That's fine. We'll say yes, um, and expand this thing down, and we're going to turn the color all the way up. Hit the play button to have the the view repopulated, and now you'll see down here that the point cloud is now in color. Now part of this thing also is the georeferencing aspect. So what we're going to have to do is import in the points that we uh, collected using that Zeb, that uh, reference plate. So underneath here we have the reference plate offsets. The way we're going to get those things inside of here is we're going to click on where this thing says 3D points and just click somewhere within the project and you'll see down here there's an option here to import points. So we're going to click on import points, browse, and we're inside that georeference folder. There's my uh, CT number three with reference offset. I'll say OK. And we'll expand this thing out. Now this, uh, there is a header on here saying these are the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And this header on here does not match. But all we have to do is just drop this thing down. This is X, Y, and Z. Make all the rest of these mean nothing. And we'll say import. And it's basically telling you here that the first line inside of this being a header was not read. We'll say OK. And now you'll see our reference, our reference plates and our reference points within this project. So I don't think that it really matters, but I click up here and delete any of the points that I manually created because um, I don't think that they should be here. As well as the reference points for the start and stop, I'm going to get rid of those as well. And this leaves us with our uh, five control points that we set with the uh, reference plate. Now to get these things to move over to the coordinate system that we want them to be on, under registration there's the transform calculator. So we're going to come to our transform calculator. So here are the points within our point cloud system. Over here is our reference system. So I'm going to click add file. I'm going to browse. Once again within this folder we can see here are the control points that I created. So I'm going to open those up. Now this one was northing easting elevation. So we're going to change this to Y, X, Z, and this to nothing because we don't need the descriptors. And also the import units for this were US survey feet. So we will say import. So here's our reference system. Here's our point cloud system. And at the end of it, we just want to figure out how these two fit together. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to click this button here that says Find Constellations. And when we hit Find Constellations, you can see here your delta, x, y's, and z's on each one of those points. And everything here fits relatively well, uh, considering this is uh, you know the GeoSlam information. So it all fits within the, the scope of what I expect to see. And we'll say Calculate Transformation. And then we'll say create a line. And when and it's going to tell you that when aligning the workspace, all generators are invalid. And it'll say, yes, I'm sure. I'm going to allow it to go out. Now I'm actually going to stop each one of these before it repopulates. Uh, and I am going to make sure that the color is turned all the way on. And now I'll hit play on all of these for them to start doing their thing. Now if we're looking at our top-down view, you can notice in the upper right-hand corner the coordinate system they're currently working in. And now I can export the point cloud out simply by going to Modules, Cloud Export, and we'll start clicking around. And I'll export this thing out as a recap file. Go to our files and verify where it's going. And I'm just going to place it here, give it a name, save it, and export it out. All right. So once that's been exported, we'll go to our folder where it is, and we'll open up that recap file.
you can see here colorized point cloud at the appropriate coordinate system. So that is a real quick introduction to into processing some GeoSlam information. Um, at least it's the most common question that I get uh, in regards to working with this information. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.